really okay. fast. We're live. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> Very fast. I'm Katie from NLFX Professional. I am here with Thomas Key from A Plus Entertains. And we are going to talk about uh, live streaming events and kind of um, the integration of moving forward uh, the hybrid events that we're talking about. So Thomas, tell me just a little bit about yourself. Um, How did you get to where you are? What do you do? Okay. Who are you? Well, <laughs> uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're at. Uh, I started out, it, it was a part-time thing. You know, I was working at a factory and one of the guys I worked with, we were both into music and we were both about the same age. And every time I'd go through his area, he'd ask me what song was playing. And again, because we're the same age, I'd know what they were. Eventually we were having dinner and he asked if we would, or if I would be interested in going with him to DJ a wedding. And I thought that's the craziest thing I've ever heard of. You know, I, I was married, I had a DJ at my wedding, but I didn't think, I never thought that would be anything that people still did, I guess. But I went and before the end of the night, I was on the, I was mixing music. I was on the microphone. I was absolutely hooked. And being a musician, I've been a musician my whole life. It was just an extension of, of that. Uh, in about 2008, when the last world ending thing happened, when the financial crisis happened, I lost my full-time job. I was walked out to uh, my van and told I didn't have to come back tomorrow or the day after that or the day after that or ever again. So I took that opportunity and I got a college degree and took the part-time business that I was working and focused a little bit more attention on that. My first wife passed away very suddenly in 2012 and I still had one of my kids was at home. We had we have two kids. And I decided at that point that I wanted to make this my full time career because I didn't want to miss any of the stuff that I'd been missing their whole lives. So at that point, we were I was actually called a plus digital DJs. And we were doing more than that. In 2013, we changed the name to a plus event entertainment because it was a little bit more inclusive of live music and lighting and stuff like that. And now we're A plus entertains. We just changed over in the last couple of months. We did a rebrand. We were ready to launch everything and coronavirus. Right. So still full time. I'm still a full time entertainer, master of ceremonies, DJ. We have a photo booth company. We have a decor and design rental company. My wife runs. Oh, fun. And so right now I'm in my I'm in my showroom and living my best life in spite of all of this stuff that's happening because we're living in cancellation and postponementville. So, you know, just trying to figure out ways to pivot what we do. So I have noticed that you have been um, promoting and doing quite a few uh, online uh, virtual events. Can we talk a little bit about that and how that idea kind of um, came about and the things that you're doing to implement that? Absolutely. So like many DJs, many DJs, that first week of quarantine was supposed to be, I was supposed to be presenting at Mobile Beat for the first time ever. Mm -hmm. And so after we did the virtual Mobile Beat presentations, I was asked to DJ or one of the mobile beat, you know, the virtual mobile beat type things. So I, you know, got everything hooked up and that first time was a hot train wreck of a mess because I've never tried to stream online before. So I didn't know how to do that. So after talking to a bunch of other DJs that had been doing it or were learning as, cause we were learning as we go. And we're still doing that with our stuff now. Found a system that worked. And thanks to Zoom updating constantly the way that sound is uh, reproduced, it now sounds really well, sounds really good. Yeah. So I did it a couple of times. 
And there, another thing that we were doing prior to this is we do something called Singo, which is music bingo. Yeah. And that's uh, tablet based. And I, we were doing it live every Thursday night. We were doing trivia every Tuesday night in our small community. You know, the city I live in, the population is 5,600 people on a good day. And we were, so we were doing that with our community. And the community was clamoring for this because it was, it was literally how we get through winter up here is trying to be together and with 80 people in a, in a small restaurant in the middle of a blizzard, <laughs> just diehards, just diehard fans of this product. So I figured out a way to make that work online. So now we're doing that online every Thursday night where I'm utilizing Zoom, a Zoom chat room. I use OBS to change the, uh, the way my screen looks. And basically, I can just do so many things. I can put their names, the names of the winners on the screen. I can put sponsors of prizes on the screen. And I'm just using, doing that. We're using my DJ controller and, you know, my microphones and all that good stuff too, just to make it as good of a product as possible. Does that answer your question? It does. Um, I, I do have a question for you. Uh, sure. So how are you hooking up your DJ controller to your computer to run the software, the Slingo software? What That's are you great. using? Huh? That's a great question. Uh, so one of the things that was uh, prevalent right, at, right, I mean, right now is the inability to get stuff. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because it's really hard to get things. And living in a community like I do, it's even more difficult. You know, we have two music stores in town. One of them was loading a truck yesterday. He's out of business. The other one I called on a random whim looking for, somebody told me to you to get, uh, the quickest way to do it was to get an iRig 2. Yep. And you utilize that. And I thought, well, nobody's going to have one around here. So I'm going to have to order one. Then trying to order one online, there were none anywhere because they everybody was snatching them up because everybody's streaming now. So everybody's got to have that piece of gear or whatever. Or they have more time on their hands to use the iRig 2 for what it's actually designed for, which is utilizing an iPad or an iPhone as a, an amp emulator. But it works. And I called one of the music stores and he said, I actually have one. I said, I'll be right there. Right. I, walk, I walked in. He said I was his second customer of the week, which was sad. Yes. But true. And mm -hmm. so using that coming out of the RCA from my MCX 8000 into the iRig 2, the iRig 2 plugs right into the laptop and good to go. We had, um, I think we had 40 something, 45 iRigs come in on Friday and we sold out over the weekend. The last one went this morning. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yeah. Just I remember. mean, the, yeah, the interfaces, I mean, once you get them, they're just completely gone. Um, so Thomas, my question for you is how are you planning on incorporating this to into events in the future and how do you plan on doing so? So. One of the things that is prevalent or, you know, obvious for DJs in all, you know, all things that we do is being able to pivot on a moment's notice. Mm -hmm. The biggest question that we have right now, and as an industry, the biggest question we have right now is what in the heck is a wedding going to look like when we get to that point? how are we going to incorporate 200 plus guests into uh, Jane's wedding when we can only have 50 people there or we can only have 25 people there? What we are working on and literally today after I get off this call, I've got, my, I've got some of my staff people coming in. We are working on a way to have a wedding reception that is more than, and I, I hate to talk about it because I don't want people to do it badly, 
before I get the kinks worked out. More than having a computer with Zoom on in the corner of the room, mm -hmm. that's not the same. It, you have to make people feel engaged with in what's going on. I, I envision this being a lot more like a like a television program than a Zoom chat. We're going to be utilizing different pieces of gear. We're going to be utilizing multiple cameras. The Master of Ceremonies is going to be almost a television show host for this, bringing people in, engaging people that are on the other side of a pane of glass. One of the things that I saw this weekend was the Graduate Together 2020. Mm -hmm. And Jason Alexander did such an amazing job of making that glass not be there. When he was talking about his experience and he was talking to, not at, he was talking to the people that were watching that show. And that has to be part of this. It can't just, like I said, it can't just be a camera, like a fly on the wall watching things happen. Mm -hmm. People are going to check out. We just talked about this, right? Mm -hmm. short attention span. You have to keep people engaged. You have to, or they're going to change the channel, just like in television. So are, do you have any um, ideas right now of how to keep people engaged? Once, So let's start with the gear. Let, I have many questions. <laughs> let's start with the <laughs> gear aspect of it. Um, what do you plan on incorporating so you can use those multiple cameras? Um, are you going to use like a video switcher? What are you going to be doing to bring it all together to uh, export to, to Zoom or whatever software you choose? So the first iteration of this is going to be separate cameras that are all connected to a Zoom with the moderator, which we're going to be calling our producer, is going to be controlling what people see. Because in Zoom, you can spotlight different videos. So you can spotlight the video of the host who is going to say, friends and family, guess what? I just talked to Justin, and in about five minutes, the ceremony is going to start. He is so nervous. But he doesn't know what kind of flowers she has because he, she didn't want to tell him. What kind of flowers do you think they're going to be in the bouquet? Put them in the chat. We'll be back in just about five minutes. Now, that's a lot different than a Zoom chat wedding reception. That's making people think. That's making people be engaged. Mm -hmm. And then during that, you know, I'll, you know, we'll send you to the cocktail hour area where Luke is spinning some tunes that were handpicked by the two of them because they wanted to show you what kind of music they heard on their first trip to the Grand Tetons. It's just, it has to, it has to be engaging, Katie. It has to be, mm -hmm. or people are just going to leave. So for now, the, our first iteration is going to be uh, separate cameras. So iPads that have the ability to connect to a Zoom call with a producer at the helm changing between spotlighting videos. The next, if that works well, the next iteration, of course, is then moving into a a higher echelon of software and hardware integration so that we can make it look and feel professional. We just have to make sure that the bones are there before we get to trying to pull it to that next level of production. So then with the audio, let's say, for example, the ceremony, you'd have an iPad on the bride and groom, obviously. And then are you going to pull the audio from your mixer? Exactly. And the beauty of what we're planning on doing is the fact that we have a showroom space that can hold, surprisingly enough, about 50 people. Okay. And my wife owns a decor rental and design business. So we have farm tables. We have chairs. We have charger plates. We have all of those things. We have ceremony arches. We have a, a moon gate, which is a circle arch. It's about six feet tall, seven feet, something like that. Big. It's a big round thing. 
<laughs> a big round thing. I like it's it. A big round thing that's golden. It's on Pinterest. That's all. Like that's all okay. I know. <laughs> that's all that matters. <laughs> she knows all that. Shannon knows all that stuff. I don't. So that's fine. But anyway, so we have the ability, and we have uh, you know high speed internet, high speed cable internet here. So we have all of that that ground floor stuff mm -hmm. to be able to pull this off and to see if it's going to work. Right. If if it works it's going to work. And then we have to figure out if we can do it on at different locations as well. Mm -hmm. Something to offer the people that are really, really just devastated by their wedding not happening on 6 2020 or, you know, any of those other iterations of the crazy numerology we had this year for one of our busiest seasons to date. And now these people have to find different ways to celebrate. So even if somebody wants to do a ceremony like this, we can still make it engaging. The host will have his own, will have his phone. The host will have his phone, which can connect to the Zoom chat. So it looks behind the scenes. It's just different ways of making this engage, as engaging as possible, different and meaningful. So my next question for you is, let, it, it comes together, it works great, okay? How are you going to plan on, how do you plan on marketing it? Do you plan on um, offering it at your space or marketing it to the venues or to the brides and grooms? How do you plan on marketing this new um, service that you're going to hopefully offer in the future? So we are about to have a contest here in the local area for an elopement giveaway. And what that is, is people are going to go on Instagram and they're going to post their original wedding date and uh, tag the other vendors that are in this post. You know, it's uh, Instagram boosting kind of a thing. And then we're going to randomly select two couples. Well, the, this, there's a, there's a third option that, is kind of on the down low where we offer the the digital wedding here. I hate calling stuff virtual. Yeah. Because it's not. It's real. It's really happening. It's just more of a digital version or an online based or an online internet trying to find a better way to call that, a better thing to call that than a virtual wedding or a Zoom wedding. But micro weddings, I believe, are going to be a big thing, in especially in our area. We're a highly destination wedding area. We've got like 90, 90 to ninety five percent of our events are destination weddings. So it just has to again, like it's hard to market something when you can't fake it to make that be a thing. So it's hard to be able to do that when I, until I can have a bunch of people in here. Mm -hmm. So we're, you know, our, my a couple of the people on my staff are 14 day locking down so we can come in here and try to recreate what this will look and feel like. Also using video footage from past weddings and from other uh, vendors. But that's where this is going to take off is that that that's our launch point is this online contest that's going to be on the local news and that kind of stuff. I really, I, I think it's a great idea and I'd love to see behind the scenes stuff. Cause I'm like, I love behind the scenes to see how things all come together for a finished product. I love that. <laughs> You're a gearhead. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, Hanging out with Ben helps with that, I'm sure. Right. Um, I do want to say, guys, if you have questions for myself or Thomas, write them in the comments. I am monitoring them here on the side. So if you have questions about gear, um, marketing strategies, anything, just let me know. I'd be happy to address them. Um, so Thomas, we do have a few more um, minutes left. So what, if you could give advice, um, to people wanting to to get into this, where would you say that they should start? Probably the, the starting point would be knowing what you're good at. And 
as far as doing the virtual or the online, that kind of stuff, it's having the ability to engage and be engaging. When I did the mobile beat presentation, the online version of it, it was the weirdest thing I've done in a really long time. I watched a little bit of that. <laughs> Talking to nobody. Because and but now I can, it's a little bit easier because now it's starting to become the new normal. Mm -hmm. Normal. But being able to be engaging and being able to bring people in and actually making them care about what you're saying or what you're doing or what you're presenting and making them feel like they're there with you. That's the biggest thing. If you can't do that, it's just best to find a different way to pivot. You know, we're, it, we're entertainers at heart. And I saw somebody posted something about this being the end of the interactive MC. And I have to say that it is the furthest thing from the truth. As masters of ceremonies, as event hosts, as entertainers, it's no longer going to be enough to be a good DJ. You're going to have to make people care about the words that you say. You're going to have to make people care about what is going on around them because you might not be able to have a dance floor at your wedding. You might not be able to have 200 people at a wedding. So every moment that every moment that you're in charge of has to be made as memorable as possible. And the master of ceremonies is going to have to be the one to do that. I like that because it, and it also it brings people together who are there and online and it just kind of makes it all mesh very, very well. All right. So if you have ever watched any Katie cast, you know, the last question of the day belongs to my son who is nine. He will be 10 <laughs> on May 30th, but I do have it written down. <laughs> um, so his question this week, it, it, the obvious answer is the coronavirus and what's going on. But um, when you are old, what do you think your children or grandchildren will ask you to tell stories about? Hmm. Well, uh, my situation uh, would be they might ask me to tell them about my relationship with their mom. Okay. And where, where, how that formed and the, the details behind the, <clears throat> excuse me, the dating and the courtship and what it was like having them, you know, as children and how I feel about them as children as well. I changed a lot of things that I, from my life at that point. And the biggest one was, or the biggest reason was that I wanted my kids to be able to be successful in spite of losing their mom at a very early age. So I believe that when the time comes, they'll ask me questions about that. How old are your kids now? <clears throat> well, my daughter is about to turn 30 and my son is 22. Okay. Perfect. By the way, and fun fact, yes. my daughter's name is Katie Lynn. Oh, funny. <laughs> <laughs> so let me tell you a little story about Katie Lynn. Um, when I started working at NLFX, like I needed a way to decipher, um, you know, cause Kat works there too. And then, so Katie Lynn just seemed to be the right choice. Cause Kat, Katie, people get us confused all the time as it is. So, the only person who's ever called me Katie Lynn before I started working at NLFX was my dad. When he was mad at me as a child, he would <laughs> call out my full name <laughs> and <laughs> say, get your butt over here right now. And I knew I was in trouble. So it was kind of a, a weird transition for me. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. So now, now that's your, that's your name now. Well, uh, yes. In this industry, that is my name. Most people just call me Katie. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, Nick. What's up, Nick? 
All right, guys, that's it for today. Uh, make sure you join us tomorrow. I do have Nick Spinelli here. Thank you, Thomas, for joining me. I do appreciate it. I am, I'm really excited to see what, what happens with, you know, your meetings and stuff. I would love to see behind the scenes, like I said, so I'll keep an eye out for those. Um, make sure you follow me on Instagram at NLFXKD right here. I do put behind the scenes and replays and on YouTube at NLFX Pro. And make sure you follow Thomas at A Plus Entertains. That's A P L U S Entertains. Perfect, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Thanks a lot, Katie. I appreciate it. Yeah, I do appreciate it.